and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on where and when you are watching this. My name is Keelan McNamara. I am back for Low Kick MMA, and today I have yet another amazing guest joining us. He's making his one championship debut very, very soon against Roel Rosario, and he's a very well-respected teammate of Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. It is, of course, the one and only Mr. James Yang. How are you, man? Thank you for being with us. I'm doing us. great, brother. How you doing, man? Thanks I'm for having good, me. Man. I'm good. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, so just to kick us off, James, would you mind telling our audience just a bit about yourself, your background, your beginnings? What do you specialize in in mixed martial arts and what do you think sets you apart from everyone else? Yeah, absolutely, man. So, yeah, I guess I get I guess start from the beginning. My martial arts career was uh, I started with Kung Fu, traditional Kung Fu, Southern styles Kung Fu. Um, I got my start in like a dungeon garage in Chinatown and I was like the only kid in there. And uh, all the guys were like these like hardened dudes, like ex-military guys, golden glove boxers, karate kyokushin guys, or some security guard guys were security. Um, and they kind of just groomed me and raised me up, man, in, in, that, in that scenario. Um, uh, yeah, martial arts has always been my number one passion. I've always, it's the only thing I've always ever wanted to do. Um, and yeah, that's kind of got my start. Absolutely. That's a great background story, actually. Um, I appreciate the honesty more than anything, because a lot of guys um, present a very sort of polished beginning and how it's very sort of clean and squeaky clean from the very beginning. But that's a great story. Chinatown, that's, that's, that is very, very good. So sort of transitioning from that, in your amateur career, you obviously have a perfect 6-0 record, a record a lot of guys really... Is it really seven I interrupt you. It's actually seven. They, they got it wrong on that topology. Oh, I apologize. It was seven. Yeah, they got they got it wrong on that. But I also have a MMA fight on there, or not MMA, but Muay Thai fight. Um, ah. But yeah, they, they got it wrong on there. But yeah, it should be seven and zero MMA, one and zero Muay Thai, and a bunch of Sanda Sanchao competitions I've done in the past. But. Whatever. It's all good. <laughs> I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. It's seven and no, not six. We were doing my mom dirty. Um, so <laughs> obviously, you have a perfect seven and no record. Um, one question that I have for you is, obviously, you're turning pro now, debuting in one championship. Is there any particular reason why you want to turn pro now? I mean, obviously, it was rumored you had a couple of opportunities, like in the past, to turn pro. Did you think it was perhaps too soon? Did you want to build up more experience? Was there any particular reason as to why you've chosen now to make that transition? Well, I, you know, at the at the time, I was developing a lot of momentum, and I was I was undefeated, and I was trying to get fights, and no one would fight me in the in the local circuits or even in even in Canada. Actually, we're trying to get points in Canada, and and then I had some a string of grappling matches because I, I got to a point where I was like, I'll just fight anything at any any Muay Thai, kickboxing, boxing, grappling, just anything if someone can compete. And the only thing I could get was uh, grappling matches. So I, I grappled with two black belts. Um, I ended up submitting both of them in a submission only uh, grappling match. Uh, and then I had all this momentum going into I was going to go into one warrior series and get my start there. But then the worldwide pandemic happened. Everything halted and I got shelved for a couple of years. So that's, that's the situation I've been in. Um, but for me as a martial artist, you know, this, this, at my age, the time I have to go now, this is like, if I don't do it now, then I'll live the rest of my life with the, what if, what if I gave it a shot? You know, I don't want to live like that. So that's, that's the main reason why, uh, you know, we got to go now and, and do it now. And I have this great opportunity and I'm, I'm, I've been training this whole time, training my ass off this whole time for it. And I, I just, I just can't wait to get out there and, and perform. I respect that for sure. Um, you actually kind of answered my next question as well there. Um, obviously, the very eagle-eyed fan will notice that it has been a little bit of a while since you competed. I think your last fight was around 2018, 2019. And I was yeah. just going to ask if there was any reasoning why there was that gap. But you kind of answered that already, I feel, and that it was perhaps just very difficult to find opponents. Was that the main reason for that sort of gap in between? Yeah, that was the main reason. I had a bunch of fights scheduled and then they kept falling out one after the other uh for whatever reason i don't even they didn't really give a reason but you know I, I understand whatever if they don't want to fight then i can't force no one to fight you know they're not getting paid to do it so i just was trying to get experience it's like you know like any profession a uh, high level profession you need to have you get tested right you have to go test if you're a doctor or you're a lawyer every year you get tested to make sure your skills are on point and for, for me, that's what each fight was like. You know, my team, my coach, that's how we view it. You know, each fight is like a test. And if you can't make it through those, then, you know, you got to go back to the drawing board, re restudy and all that. 
but I kept passing it, kept making, you know, it's not just that you win, you have to win with the, you have to finish the guys, you know, you can't just get skate by, by a close decision or whatever, or a close fight. You have to win decisively and you have to win in emphatic fashion. It has to be exciting. And, and I believe I was able, I was able to do that in, you know, as the, as the fights kept going on, I kept getting better and better and better. Um, and ever since then, I just been training, locked myself in and just been grinding in, in a tunnel vision. Um, so that's what I've been doing. That's great. And the record obviously definitely does reflect that being seven and oh, of course, as we've mentioned already, James, you're obviously making your debut in one championship very soon. And I don't think there's anybody who would disagree that one championship is a fantastic promotion to make your debut as a young professional fighter. What's the one experience been like for you so far? Man, it's nothing, it's been nothing but uh, amazing. You know, I, I've been going back and forth with Deej um, over the last couple of years. And yeah, I just, I just love the way they promote the fight, uh, martial arts over the fights, you know, because in Asia, every, every martial art has a cultural significance to each country, you know, and, and, and for me growing up, it's always been sort of part of my identity. You know, that's how, I, you know, my grandma used to take me to Chinatown. We'd watch lion dancing and all these performances. And then I ended up joining the team and performing all around Chinatown. And I ended up going to Asia, living in a Shaolin martial art academy for years. Um, and I got to tour around and train uh, in Asia and, and perform in Asia. Um, so, you know, all that's been just kind of how I've always lived my life. It's always been like a part of me. So to see that in, in uh, MMA uh, promotions, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man, because you don't get a lot of that in, in these other promotions. You know, you, I love the other promotions because of the competition and the, the fighting and the sporting, the sport of it all. But they miss the neglecting a big part of martial arts. And, and I believe one championship covers those bases. Yeah, um, I couldn't actually agree more with you. Obviously, anybody who knows mixed martial arts knows how deep rooted into the culture mixed martial arts is in so many of those Asian countries. Obviously, one championship is based in Singapore, so they naturally have got a deep rooted tie to martial arts as well. I, I would assume, obviously, unfortunately, I don't know offhand, but I would assume you got a couple of different offers for places to make your professional debut. Was one championship being based in Singapore a big cultural reason for wanting to make your debut there? Did it have extra meaning for you? Well, yeah, I mean, just just the opportunity of coming up to fight in one championship was probably the biggest opportunity that I've had, you know, so I had to take that um, and the chance to be able to travel, not just out of Singapore, but go to China or, or Japan, all these different countries, Vietnam, especially that's also where I'm from. I, I just love the opportunity to be able to fight in any of those countries. You know, I, I've lived a lot of time in China. I lived in Thailand. I lived around Asia. I have family in Vietnam and in China as well. So it's just, it's just, you know, it's like going back to the homeland almost, you know, um, but Singapore itself is a beautiful country. I wish we can go hang out there more often, but um, yeah, yeah, it's it's a beautiful place, and I'm just excited to be able to get over there and, and do my thing. Hmm. Most definitely, most definitely. So moving on to your actual debut, because I feel that is well, obviously, it is a very very important part of the interview to cover. Your opponent, Roel Rosaro. Um, what do you make of him? Uh, have you studied him a lot? I started him up a little. I watched a couple of videos of him. Um, yeah, he's a he's a good striker, he's a southpaw fighter. He fights out of the, he's a, he's a hungry dude out of the Philippines, man. I, you know, I love my Filipino people, but yeah, I understand. Like living out there in Asia, I know what it's like. You know, they're, they're you know, the fighting community out there. They they really are hungry as hell. You know, because they they know what it's like to live with nothing. But I too have lived with nothing like that, and I, I experienced that as well. So I understand where they're coming from. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a he's a good, he's a great first opponent. Uh, I'm not looking past him at all. He's very dangerous. Um, and I'm just, yeah, I, I would say, you know, I would say I was excited for the fight and everything, but as it gets closer, I just become more cool, calm, and collected, you know, because getting too excited is just another word for fear. And you're like, getting your emotions get the better of you. So as I get closer to the fights, I always just kind of just zen out and get calm and just get in the zone. That's great. Um, and you've covered actually Roel Rosaro's strengths very well. Roel is obviously an excellent southpaw, as you've said, and he's a very clean, crisp striker. What do you feel personally that you do better than him? How do you see yourself winning this fight? Because obviously you're a very well-rounded fighter, I would say. You've got great striking and your ground game is very underestimated too. Is there any of the, which area do you think you best him at? Yeah, I mean, we'll have to find out. Tune in, find out, baby. <laughs> um, I, I do feel, 
yeah, it's it's about in this game, it's about the IQ, the fight IQ. You know, so who can? I mean, at this point, everyone's dangerous. Everyone has physical attributes. Um, so it's all about how you can adapt to the opponent. That that's the main thing. So I just have to use my brains. Hmm. Absolutely, fight IQ is pretty much all of that. It is everything. Uh, one thing else I'd like to cover with you, James, is obviously one of the things aside from your very impressive career that you're known for best is your a very good training partner and a very good friend of Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Just for people, I mean, obviously many of us who've never had the honor, what is it like training with Demetrius on a day-to-day basis? How is he? Yeah, man, I mean, it's an honor, man, because every every time I'm always learning something new, you know, not even just in the gym, but, you know, I, just in life in general, you know, we really look out for each other, you know, his well-being. And in this camp especially, he's been really on the, he's really been like, uh, it's like the yin and yang, you know, one coach is telling me to go hard or the other one's telling me, DJ would tell me, hey, just relax, recover, take your time off. Don't got to push yourself so hard in the gym. I'm already putting in three, you know, two, two days, three a days in the gym. He's like, hey, man, you got to let yourself recover to get the benefits of it. And I've just been trying to get more of that into my, 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 my mindset, you know, because sometimes you're, you're in the grind, you're gym grinding, 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 you're pushing through injury, you're working yourself to the bone but you're not going to get the benefits of that workout if you don't let yourself recover in between the training sessions. And so that's been a big, big asset um, that he's been trying to, you know, get in my mind. So uh, it's, I mean, this has been grateful. I'm grateful for training with him because he pushes me and I, I try to push him as hard as I can to, you know, develop his skill sets. Um, and yeah, that's just what it's been. It, be, be honest, you know, it all comes down to chemistry is that like you train with a guy day in, day out, month after month, year after year, either you're going to love him or you're going to hate him. And it's not going to work out. And luckily for us, we've become really good friends. And uh, yeah, it's not just him too. It's just the whole gym in general. We all have guys that are, that are killers, even though if you don't not know about them, even they didn't go pursue a professional fight career, they're at that level. You know, they're very dangerous and, and very, they're just humble martial artists that want to get better. That's what, it, that's what our gym is about. Absolutely. That's, that's a fantastic answer overall. Um, one thing that I would like to ask you about as well, about DJ, um, will he be in your corner for this fight? Do you think? He will be in my corner. Yeah. He will be with me flying over, uh, we'll be flying out next Friday. So that's a big, it's a big honor to have him in the, in the corner. He's always been my corner for amateur fights as well. So yeah, I think that's a big, big benefit to have. And when he fights, when it's his turn, I'll be in his corner. I'm always in his corner too. So that's how we do it now. Definitely. That's brilliant. Um, obviously, just to sort of continue very briefly on about Demetrius himself, unfortunately, yeah. he had that um, very disappointing last loss to Mariah in one championship. Now, we know, everybody knows how much of a truly class act Demetrius is. I mean, that's a quality, that's a spice throughout your gym wholly. Um, how well did he handle that loss? Because I would imagine... It's it's obviously a very bitter pill to swallow, but I how well did he actually handle it? I mean, unbelievably well. I mean, I I, I look up to him even more because of it. I mean, he, it didn't really get him down too much. I mean, he obviously you know he he would like to get it back and everything, but I mean the way he handled it, it was incredible. You know, it didn't it didn't get him down too much, and if anything, I think it's motivated him put a fire under him even more so than he already had, but yeah, he, he's, he's, he handled it better than he I've ever seen. So yeah, I, I just want to help him. <clears throat> if anything, actually, I think I took it worse, to be honest. I felt like it was my fault that I let him down or something, you know, it's just, it's just a weird thing, but it's just part of the game, you know, it's high, highs, highs, lows, lows kind of thing. Um, and it just made me want to be there for him even more. So we'll get his next fights ready. We'll get him ready for his next fight. And I'll just be there every step of the way to, uh, help him succeed so yeah i must admit i didn't expect any of a different answer because like i said we know how much of a truly class act and ambassador for mixed martial arts that demetrius johnson is so thank you for more confirming it more than anything else Um, and just on a very brief segue off of that um i again i think i know the answer to this question but just from your perspective as well how well do you think he'll bounce back from this? Do you think this will take him all the way to the top of one championship, having experienced that defeat? I think so. Absolutely. I think he will. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like anything in life, you know, we always, it's like a roller coaster. You, know? you have, you know, everyone has setbacks and you have two choices that accept it and just let it 
tear you down or you can utilize it as energy and motivate you and move forward. And I believe that's what, that's what he will do. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm honestly not surprised to hear that. Um, it's more just to confirm it than anything else. So James, back to you more importantly, um, will you fight again in 2021? Do you think once you've got past Roel, obviously I know you're not looking past him. Nobody ever would. But assuming you do get past him, what are you? What are your? What's your outline for twenty twenty one? Do you think? Yeah, I just want to get. I just want to get as many competitions, as many fights as I can. I just want to go. You know, once once I get this first fight, I just want. I don't want to stop. You know, I just want to be active and and stay stay fighting, get as many fights as I can within the year, next year, and until I get to where I need to go, which is for me the goal is the belt. So, I, I need to just fight and fight, 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 fight. <laughs> so 2021 and 22 are about just activity for you and getting that continuity then that's right that's all it is i just want to get back to it um and compete i love competition and that's that's what it you know that's what i'm here for brilliant um how quickly um sort of just staying with that in a way and um, especially in one championship how quickly do you want to move through the ranks and how quickly do you see yourself moving through the ranks? Yeah, I mean, it really just depends on my performances, man. It, it, you have to see, you know, I just have to put out the performances, make them exciting, make them become a fan favorite. And the only way you can do that is by winning in, in, in amazing fashion. You know, if you don't do that, then if people are kind of talking about you, thinking about you after the fights, then what's the point, you know, what's the point to move forward with that? So that's my goal is always go in, go forward, go for the finish. Um, and then we'll see how it plays out from there. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. So James, I know this, is, I understand this might be a bit of a difficult question to answer at this point, because you're still only very, very young in your mixed martial arts career. In fact, to many, in comparison to many, it's, you've hardly even started in terms of longevity, but as an MMA pro, what are your big goals? Where does James Yang see himself in five to six years? five six years from now i want to definitely have the belt definitely want to be a top top you know top contender or have the belt um and just be following the footsteps of my brother dj man that's that's really what it is about um that's always been my goal uh as a child i was wanting to be you know a professional athlete world champion but you know as a martial artist you know that that's only a fraction of my life you know martial arts is not just for a few years or a fight career it's for the whole life it's a lifelong journey lifelong endeavor and after my fighting career is done i still will be heavily involved in martial arts so whatever happens in the next five six years you know i fight out i do whatever i can in that those time afterwards i would like to i mean i auditioned a long time ago i got a chance to audition for cirque du soleil and i got in out of like hundreds and hundreds of videos i don't mean those people sent in but then of all those, they took like 16 people had a live audition and of those 16, they took two people. And I was one of those two and I got into, so I'm in their database. They've asked me to do shows with them. And it's always been a goal of mine as well to perform on that stage, uh, either in car or whatever show they want me to do. And so I, after my fight career, I would like to do at least do a year of, of performing there. And then from there transition to something else that involves martial arts, maybe film, stunt work, teaching, whatever it is. Uh, but we'll have to see, we'll have to find out. That's fantastic. I wish I was good enough to do something like that. Um, sort of segueing briefly off of the wider goals as a professional fighter, obviously, you know, the first time any of us were introduced to DJ and the reason so many of us love DJ is obviously for being such an utterly dominant champion in the UFC. Obviously, he's the by far and away the record title defense holder for the flyweight division. Do yeah. you see a path where your career takes you back across the water, back to DJ's home of the UFC? I mean, we never know, man. The, honestly, what I would like to do is like cross promotion fights. If, yeah. if one day that could ever happen where like champion versus champion from two different leagues or multiple leagues could go together. But, you know, it all comes out of contracts and, and you know, people who you know, company owners and all that. I don't know if they're so willing to do that, but I know like Ry Risen, Rise, Risen and, and, uh, bellator they do that they switch their fires back and forth and so you never know i mean i think that'd be the coolest thing for fans too to see like a dominant champion in one organ in one championship versus a dominant champion in whatever other uh, promotion you know that would be an amazing thing to for for everybody to see so 
It definitely would be. I mean, I even as a fan, I remember the closest thing that we've ever got to that was back in the days of Pride. And obviously we saw guys like Chuck Liddell and Dan Henderson go back and forth between the UFC and Pride. And we saw them put themselves against the very best. So I can promise you personally, you are not alone in that view. We would all love to see them. And even, yeah. um, I th- was it Bellator? I think Darian Caldwell had a cross-promotion fight as well. And that, oh, really? and that was huge. And that attracted huge, huge audiences too, obviously from Asia and from America. So believe me, we would all love to see that happen most definitely. So, James, sort of my last major question for you before we get on to our predictions. When you're done fighting as a professional, probably in the next, I would imagine, decade or so, what do you want to be remembered for? What is the legacy of James Yang? So I just put it all on the line. You know, I'm a hard worker. I went, I went out there and performed to my best of my ability, and I did it with integrity, and I didn't have to... Uh, you know, tra- I didn't do no, and also no PEDs. I'm all healthy. But a lot of guys that like, are called the goat, you know, but have been busted for shit. How you can you can't you guys just claim all of that? That's what makes DJ who he is because he's never been popped for nothing, you know. And some of these guys are at the in the goat conversation, you know. Uh, yeah, they had some great fights, but like, damn, dude, they've done they've done a lot of stuff out of that that kind of disqualifies, in my opinion. So I mean, that's one. You know, I just want to make sure that my fight career is remembered as. um just something that future fighters can look up to and inspire to, you know, and motivate the next generation. Because whether, you know, any fighter thinks they're a role model or not a role model, you are a role model. There's a lot of young fighters that are watching. Just like when I was a kid, I was watching many fighters, you know, growing up. And, you know, they emulate, try to, they're going to try to emulate you at some point. And, you know, if you're doing all these kind of, all this crap that, you got to look at the trajectory of the fight game, you know, where, where do you want it to go in uh, 20 years from now? Do you want it to go, just, you know, I wanted to go in a path that is respectable and that everyone can, it's just like any sport, you know, and people can enjoy it and uh, take it home to their family, watch it with their children. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what I want. So. Would it be fair to say that there's a very particular fighter that you would have looked up to sort of like, I'm trying to think what is sort of fighter along the lines of Leo to Machida have been a big inspiration for you? I mean, that, he, I was, I, I liked watching him growing up too, but you know, like Fedor, Emelianenko, Mirko Krokop, all them boys from Pride, man, to be honest. I mean, I love watching those guys, Rich Franklin, all those guys, Anderson Silva, GSP back in the day, you know, Matt Hughes, all, like I love, I've been watching fights for a long, long time, you know, so, and not even just in MMA, like kickboxers, Ramon Deckers, you know, I got Muay Thai fighters, the you know, all these, all these amazing fighters all around the world in different promotions, boxing and everything that, you know, I looked up to the Gracie's grappling, you know, just everything you know, all around, you know, even wrestling too. So, yeah. and, and out of that, you know, I'm a big Bruce Lee, Jet Lee, Jackie Chan fan, you know, Donnie and those guys, like, you know, it's Kung Fu movies. I grew up on that as well. So I draw inspiration from, from everybody and out of fighting competition, I, I still have inspirations from other sports and other people as well. So it's just, you got to keep that open mind and find, I, I guess I'm inspired by greatness. If I see people doing amazing things, great things, you have to look at that and, and admire that. And then I kind of study it as well to see where, because they leave trails, you know, in, in crumbs. And if you pick it up and, and keep an open mind, not pretend like you know everything, you can start developing and, and, and following in footsteps. That's a and it makes all, answer. It makes all, <laughs> that's a great answer i genuinely don't think i've ever gotten that answer before i'm inspired by greatness i love it james thank you so much um, thank you man thank so you. the last section that i've got for you before i let you go because i'm sure you've got a bunch of stuff to be preparing for obviously in the ufc we've got some huge huge fights coming up and as an incredibly respected fighter yourself i'd love to hear your opinions on these so um, if it's okay, I'll just take a minute for about each fight or so, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. <laughs> Dustin Poirier is meant to be fighting Charles Oliveira around December for the UFC Lightweight Championship. How do you see that one going? That's going to be a banger. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Charles Oliveira, though, because he's so clean and crisp, you know, but, you know, Dustin got, has a different power set. You know, he just he can throw a lot harder and fluid combinations. But Charles, if he goes to the ground, I think Charles has a big advantage. You know, he can definitely uh, put you up in a triangle, put you in. in. So it really is going to come down to who, who shows up that night. You know, who, who has the better camp, who comes in healthier, who has, 
and also maybe a little bit of luck might play a game into it as well, you know, because even guys get clipped and get hurt, they can still win the fight if they stay composed. So it just depends on who can keep that, that mindset there, you know. Exactly like the Michael Chandler fight, you mentioned luck and how important of a part that can play. Obviously, Charles got clipped, but he was able to ride it out until the second round. Yeah, he's able to stay composed, and that's the biggest thing. You know, some guys get frantic and, and panic, but obviously he was able to just stay stay calm, and he's, he's so technically clean. You know, everything he does is is picture perfect. You know, he never overextends himself. Um, so, yeah, I guess like that'd be probably where someone could get caught is if they overextend themselves on the feet and get countered that's that's the biggest thing so absolutely yeah so the second fight that we've got coming up is a real og fight like the old school fans will absolutely love this one i know i'm looking forward to it robbie lawler and nick diaz 2004 has come back around again what do you yes. think of this one Woo! Now that's a fan favorite right there uh-huh. i'm excited for that one so much more than any other fight because i mean we have Nick Diaz on the long layoff as well. He's, he's been off for, when's the last time he fought? Like six years ago, five years ago? 2015, you know? I think. Seven years ago. All right. I mean, that, I mean, that's a long time off. But but I think he has, he's been training, staying sharp. And Robbie looks good too, though. So you, yeah, this is going to be a big firefight, man. Let's see if Robbie can revenge that loss. And if he does, are we going to get the third fight? <laughs> you know, that's one to one now. You know, you got to run it back. Um but yeah, I'm excited for that one. Uh, Diaz brothers always come in great shape. The durability is insane off the charts. Uh, but we're gonna have to see if that layoff paid a big, big factor in this or not. And that's why I'm excited to see we find the answer. And I want to see him lay down like they did the silver <laughs> fight and say, "What's up, Robbie? Come get some." But that stuff is just unbelievably hilarious to me. And but it, it really gets in the people's minds, you know, that psychological warfare is what it's all about. And Robbie is a guy that. He's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to take your soul away from you. You know, he's trying to like, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you crack him. You can split his lip wide open and he'll still come forward like a zombie at you and, and go for the kill. So he's a, he's a, he's definitely a fighter that I look up to as well. So I'm just excited for that matchup. It's amazing. Oh, same as that. See if they do a trilogy and Robbie Lawler has her again. I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the last uh, the last fight I'd love to pick your brain on, James, uh, Cyril Gan Francis and Ganu. Now this is a fight personally that I think could be one of the most intriguing heavyweight title fights that we've had in years. What do you think of this one? I mean, yeah, man. Have you seen the sparring footage of them? I mean, I have. I, uh, yeah, but you know, as sparring and actual fighting, who knows what could happen? Especially with the heavyweights, one shot is all it takes. So. I mean, Cyril Gaines got a lot of movement. He can move in and out, but if, you know, it doesn't matter how good you can jump around and dance around. One shot changes the whole thing in heavyweight. So, you know, that's like really no matter how good a heavyweight fighter can be or is, or how dominant they are, I always say it's like a 50 50 crapshoot because it's just one mistake and it's over. You know, that, that's all it takes in heavyweights. So, I mean, that's, that's going to be a great fight. I'm looking forward to seeing that one play out. But yeah, man. That's just how I think of heavyweight fights. It's just 50-50. It's a 50-50 shot every time. Yeah, I, I honestly couldn't agree more because it is the one division where a single shot changes the entire course. Even if it's, I mean, Derek Lewis literally epitomizes that fact. I mean, at the end of the fifth round, one shot from him and the fight's completely reversed. So I truly, truly could not agree more with that. I think you summed it up perfectly. Anyway, James, that is everything for me. Um, I have to say, this has been an amazing interview. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm sure our audience will appreciate it beyond no measure. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching this interview, please, please make sure to check out James Yang's debut in one championship. I know I'm hyped for it. I'm sure you all will be now after watching this interview. Go check him out. Check out all his social medias. And yeah, this has been an amazing interview. James Yang, my brother, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it a lot. I look forward to talking to you in the future. It's a privilege, man. Thank you so, so much. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.